What's up, fellas? I think I'm just going to go on and stick with the hand clap. Shit, I've been doing it too long now. I am too much of a habit. But anyway, guys, today we're here to talk about how to negotiate. All right. Now, I had to put in relationship in the title because I know all you booty monsters don't care nothing about no negotiation. But it's not clickbait because I actually can co correlate it with dating because, guys, you have to understand that pretty much everything you do in life is a negotiation. And so when you meet a woman during the courting phase, you're negotiating how she's going to treat you throughout the relationship. This is when the negotiation takes place. Everything's how you demand to be treated in the courting phase is what you're saying going forward. This how, so in other words, if during the courting phase, if you're okay with her ass checking her Instagram likes, Every three seconds in the courting phase, well, guess what? A year from now, she's still going to be checking her Instagram likes every three seconds, okay? If you're saying, hey, when you with me, I want your undivided attention, all right? You can check, you, you can check your Instagram likes and comments any other time throughout the day, but when you're with daddy, put the phone down. And then that's going to be the expectations throughout the relationship. If getting head is a requirement of you and if she's a girl that, eh, you know, she's not too big on that. Well, this is when you got to negotiate it. You can't negotiate it eight months, a year in. Hey, you know, um, I really would like some head. No, you got to negotiate it during the courting phase. The, when y'all first start having sex, that's when you negotiate it. If she isn't doing it then, don't expect her to do it later. We're going to say, well, AMS, what if she builds an attachment? Maybe so. But guys, y'all guys got to understand attachments are rare. I think y'all guys just think attachments grow on trees. Most of you guys who got girlfriends, they just tolerating your ass. Just because she's sleeping with you, you run around your ass around town thinking, my girl attached to me. She ain't attached to your ass. You just better than nothing. Y'all run around here, right? I got my girl attached, my girl attached. Just because you've been dating more than two months, motherfucker, don't mean she's attached. Shit. Hey, goddamn everybody who watched my goddamn video think they got them girl attached. Well, here we go. If she ain't lick your butt, she ain't attached. God damn it. Nah, I ain't gonna go that far. I ain't gonna go that far. All right, I ain't gonna go that far. But y'all guys get what I mean. Y'all guys get what I mean. But just being real, if she isn't doing it during the courting phase, it's not gonna happen. All right? So you got to negotiate everything on how she's gonna treat you. If she's not cooking during the courting phase before she becomes your girlfriend, you think she's gonna do it a year later? Hell no. You got to negotiate that. I require a hot meal every night or twice a week or once a week. You got to negotiate that. You, she can't, you can't expect her to cook one time during the courting phase and then a year later, now you want a meal four times a week. No, that's not what we negotiated. All right? So I just want to put that out there, guys. Everything is a negotiation. So I'm going to take this from two parameters, all right? I'm going to do this from negotiating in business and while simultaneously doing uh, negotiations in relationship, how you negotiate a great relationship, okay? Just so y'all can't say I clickbait y'all, all right? So, number one, guys, the best way to negotiate, guys, is to be in a position of power. What does that mean? That means I don't need to sell. I can take it or leave it. The worst thing you could do is be in a situation where you need this sale to go through. You can't walk away from the sale. The best way to be in that, avoid that position, guys, is to have a savings. Something to, to back you up to where you're not desperate for the sale. If you're desperate for the sale, and I won't even bring up, you know, you buying something or something like that. Guys, unless you buy like a kidney or a heart or something like that, you shouldn't be that desperate like you going to die. Like if somebody had this damn glass for sale or this damn cell phone for sale, 
I shouldn't, I should always be in a position of power because that's just a want. That's not a need. I can, I should be in a position where if I don't get a fair price from this, I'm going to just walk my ass away. Okay, guys. So that's this. When, when, when I went and bought my jewelry, all right, I, I'm not going to die if I don't, if I leave up out of here without a jury. So I go in there with the mindset of this is what I'm willing to spend for this. And that's, I'm not going above that. I'm not going to die if I don't buy this necklace. So you're going to either give me the price I want or I can walk my happy ass up out of here. Okay, guys. So as far as, you know, consumption, as far as negotiating, you should not be in a position to where you need to buy something because that's just consumption. Now, if you need a kidney or a heart on the other hand or something like that, man, maybe you'd be a little bit more desperate. But that's a little far-fetched. Most of you guys get what I'm saying. It's for consumption. Now, if you're negotiating for a sale, you could be in a position where you need it. Maybe your bills need paid. What I'm telling you is, if you're going to do sales, you better off being in a position of power. What does this mean? If you, this is what I recommend, guys. If you're somebody who's going to do sales, I recommend that you get your life in order first because it's erratic. So if you're somebody who's going to sell cars or sell jewelry or something like that, and you got $200 in your bank account, I don't know how that works. I don't, I don't know how that works. You're going to be walking around sucking cock for sales because you're too desperate. So you need to be in a position to where you're in a position of power to where you're not desperate. Okay, and I'm gonna get back on that a little bit later as far as that position of power. As far as this correlating to relationships, you be in a position of power by having options, hobbies, purpose. That's where you're not desperate for a girlfriend. The best place a man could be in is being the best version of himself as far as fitness, dressing, his financial situation, his hobbies, his social life. That way, when you come across a girl, hey, listen, these are what I, these are my deal breakers if you're going to deal with me. And if you don't, uh, uh, you know, agree to this, then we can't talk because you're in a position of power. OK, so she go to disrespecting you or she acting all masculine and stuff. You being in a position of power, you don't have to tolerate that. On the other hand, if you ain't had no ass in six years walking around with your goddamn stomach hanging uh, lower than your dick. And for some of you, dick, that ain't, it ain't got to hang that low, but we, we, we ain't going to talk about that right now. If you're in a position like that and you ain't had a job in six months, motherfucker, maybe you ain't in a position to walk away. You see what I'm saying? That's why it's, it, it's imperative that you guys are the best version of yourself. But just being the best version of yourself, if you walk around with a six pack and you dress nice, but you ain't got no social life, you ain't got no hobbies, you ain't got no purpose, you still gonna feel lonely, you still be desperate. How many of you guys know guys that you know that are fit, look good, dress good, but yet they run around here chasing behind some girl? How many of you guys, we all know a guy that he should be good with women, but for some reason he's always desperate. Why is he desperate? His life is incomplete. If you're a man that don't have hobbies, purpose, or social life, or options, you're going to struggle to negotiate a good deal from a woman. Point blank, period. Because you're going to be just happy to have a woman. So case in point, I'm a guy who's going through a two-year drought. I meet a girl, and she don't want to cook. She don't want to give me head. Hey, that's, hey, it's better than what I, I've been getting. You see how you can't negotiate? But let's say you're a guy with options. Oh, you don't get head? Uh, it's tough. It's tough. And then you go to pull him back. If she really wants you, she gonna give you head. Okay, guys? So all this is just a negotiation. All this is a negotiation. You even, you, you, y'all guys don't even uh, uh, know it, but when a woman first sleeps with you, let's just say hypothetically she's conservative or she wants you to respect her, whatever little bullshit they use these days. I don't know. It changes every week, right? All right. You're negotiating how long you're willing to wait. If you go two months, that's what you negotiated. Me, I'm negotiating three days, four tops. If you ain't came out them draws, I'm a holler at you, sarinara. I'm negotiating that. 
And I've had women hit me back because they knew why I got ghosts. I'm not saying all. Some women gonna tell you, take your ass on. You can't wait, take your ass on. But some will call you back if they know that, hey, you don't pull back because they ain't move fast enough. That is my deal breaker. I can afford to walk away. I'm not waiting on your ass three months to get some goddamn ass. You done lost your goddamn mind. The hell you think this is? So I'm negotiating that. Drop them draws, honey. Next, guys, as far as negotiation, set your price as firm. No negotiation. When you are somebody who's in a position of power, you can say firm. It's nothing to talk about. You know, my uncle, uh, God rest his soul, he had his Corvette on the side of the house, his old ass Corvette, right? And he could crank it up, but it, was, it, it needed a little work, right? He, he could crank it up, but it needed a little work. And periodically, I would say once or twice a month, at least once a month, somebody who passed the house and saw that damn Corvette on the side of the house would stop and want to know, you know, want to talk to my uncle about it, right? Sometimes he was there, sometimes he wouldn't. But when he was there, they come in and they offer their price. And if the price, I, I kid you guys not, if the price wasn't to what my uncle felt like it was, he literally checked out the conversation. Like the guy would still be talking, my uncle be there with a flash water. He and his damn leg with a flash water. He done checked out. And I seen guys had come through that with like $7,000, $8,000. I think my uncle wanted 10 grand. I can't quite remember. It's a long time ago. I was like 13 at the time. I think, my, I think that's what he wanted for it. But whatever it was, as soon as them guys didn't give him what his price was and they tried to negotiate, my uncle checked out the conversation. Checked out. He go back. If he was eating food, He'll just stop talking and he go eating his food. If he was sitting on the couch, he had a little flash water because he loved that little flash water. And it got down one even no flies, but he just, I just, I don't know. I just think it was a bad habit. He just hitting his leg with the damn flash water. Yeah, he, he done talking. Yeah, he, he ain't got nothing else to talk about. He done talking. His price was firm because, first of all, he had something that was in demand. People were stopping by all the time. All the time for his product. You selling some bullshit, it's hard to be goddamn drive a hard bargain if you selling some bullshit. But when you got a rare old model Corvette that a lot of guys are stopping by every goddamn month. Well, I ain't gonna say a lot of guys stopping by every month, but a couple of guys stopping by every month to want to know if you want to sell it. You can drive a hard, you can be firm. Okay, guys? And so that's what I mean by that. Firm. You so, so you guys get a girlfriend. For as far as correlating this to relationship, she maybe she don't want to suck your dick. Maybe she want to suck your balls. Mm, no, mm, 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 mm. firm. You gotta suck this dick. No, we're not negotiating. Well, can I suck your left ball arm? Mm, 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 mm. That's not good enough. My price is firm. Put my whole dick and balls in your mouth. Don't negotiate. She go to tell me she want to suck the right ball. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. You can do that after. So, guys, you got to understand. All oh, this is a negotiation. You got to be firm on what you want. All right, guys? And the only way you can do that, if you're in a position of power. When I worked for the Equinox, people used to come up there all the time trying to talk their price down. They used to laugh. You lost your fucking mind. They're fucking with the Equinox. We can, shit, hell, we have to raise the price every three months just to run some of you motherfuckers out of here. You think we're going to give you a deal? Deal with these nuts. That's what the member advisors used to tell them. No goddamn deal. Go carry your ass to Zales or Tiffany's and go in there and see they're going to give you a deal for one of them goddamn diamonds. Go in there and tell them, hey, show, let them show you a $20,000 diamond and tell them you're going to give them 14 and see what they tell your ass. Like, get your ass up out of here. Shit, no damn negotiation. All right, guys. So set your prices firm if you're in a position of power to do that. And lastly, guys, be willing to walk away. Just had a patron supporter on my page that said he gave the girl his deal breakers, and basically she scoffed at it. And he told me, "What you do? What the hell you mean? What you do? What you? Uh, what you just a faker?" 
It's time for me to walk away. You guys are just bluffing. This ain't, we ain't playing uh, poker. This ain't poker while I'm bluffing. I, you don't bluff. I mean what I say. So if, 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 if somebody don't do what you, you walk away. When, when the guys used to come there to buy the Corvette for my uncle and they give a price, when they get ready to walk out, he don't say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. How much is that again? He didn't do that. Get your ass on up out of here. No negotiations. So when the person ain't giving you what you want, be ready to walk away. This ain't no bluffing. So he done gave his girl his deal breakers as to what he required her. She called his bluff and he come back on my page talking about something, what now? What the hell you mean, what now? What now? What now mean your ass is goddamn back at the unemployment line. That means your Tinder profile is reactivated. That's what now? That means reactivate your Tinder profile and hinge profile, motherfucker. That's what now? What hell you mean, what now? You're walking around here bluffing. Goddamn poker motherfuckers. Ain't no goddamn but I mean what I say. If it don't go the way I want, get your ass on. If somebody offering your price and it ain't what you want, be willing. Don't be sitting there negotiating all goddamn. I can't remember what movie that was. Was it the Bronx Tale where the dude was trying to talk the dude down for a diamond or something all day? And finally at night he done talked to the dude. I can't remember what fucking movie that was. If one of y'all guys remember what movie that was, where the guy was trying to buy an engagement ring or a diamond ring or something. And he literally was up there fucking eight hours until the guy finally talked the guy down to his price. That guy who was selling that piece of jewelry said, man, get your ass up out of here. After about 30 minutes, said, man, get your ass up out of here. Shit. If one of you guys remember that movie, write it down. I can't remember what movie that was. It was some kind of uh, Italian mafia movie. I can't remember which one it was. All right. Now, with all that said, that's nice. That's good. That's good. That's good, AMS. It's good to be in a position of power. I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. You right, it's good. But motherfucker, I ain't in no position of power. Motherfucker, my light bill getting cut off tomorrow. So I ain't in no position of power, goddamn AMS. So I don't hear all this goddamn position of power. I ain't in no goddamn position of power, goddamn it. So what do you got for me, AMS? A guy that's not in a position of power. Okay, number one guy, guys, <clears throat> if you're not in a position of power, Set your price high so you can meet in the middle. There you go. Boy, I'm a genius, ain't it? I mean, <laughs> this shit. I mean, I, t I tell y'all guys, they're going to they gonna put a fifth face up there on the Mount Rushmore. I'm telling you, it's going to be me. You see how I come up with this genius, this genius advice. Start high so you can meet in the middle. Hey, ain't like nobody else ain't never said that in the history of the fucking world. Star high, meet in the middle. So maybe you don't want to get your dick sucked. Right? Maybe you content with getting your balls licked. So you start at dick sucking and you negotiate, you compromise on getting your balls licked. You see? That's all you really wanted in the beginning. But you can't start with ball licking. Because then she's going to negotiate with something else. So you start high. It's not that hard. If you want $5,000 for a car you're selling, start off with $8,000 and meet at $5,000. Because people just like to have the feeling that they talk you down. <laughs> I talk them down. Boy, I got him good. Boy, I talk him about. That's all you wanted to begin with. He don't think he did. So he ain't did a goddamn thing. That's $5,000 all I wanted. You motherfuckers take y'all ass to jury store and call out all the time talking people down thinking you done did something. You ain't did it. You, you, you went in there and gave the motherfucker what he want. He just upped the price so you can goddamn compromise and make you feel good about yourself. So you ain't did a goddamn thing. Simple, guys. Start high, meet at the middle. <clears throat> number two, guys. Set a number in your head that you can live with. And this is different from the first one because let's say I got this glass, right? Let's say I want, I want, and, and honestly, let's say the glass goes for $100, right? Like I can fetch $100, but I'll take 60. I can live with 60. It's fine. All right. I should get 100, but I can live with 60. 60 is fine. So you go into negotiation. 
you can start at 100. And if you can, anything over 60 is a win for you because you was already had in your head that 60 is good. And you guys say, well, why wouldn't I start higher and meet at the middle? Well, it just depends on how desperate for you is for a sale. And what I mean by that, guys, is when you have a price that's so outrageously high, you run the risk of not even having any potential buyers. All right, so let's say instead of 100, I said I'm gonna charge 150 for this glass. Well, maybe now I don't even get any phone calls because the price is so high that now nobody even wants to negotiate. So when you play that high game, right, when you run that high game, you run the risk of not getting anybody to negotiate because the price is so high. Opposed to setting a fair price, people are still gonna try to talk you down but you're going to have more people trying to, to negotiate and contact you about set price, right? So in other words, if I saw a Corvette on CarMax that was going for, I don't know what Corvettes go for, let's say 50000 right? And let's say 50000 was the going rate. But let's just say the guy said, well, you know what? Somebody probably going to try to talk me down. So the best if I upraise it to 60000 and meet them at 50000 Well, you know what happens if they you know, uh, posted at 60,000, maybe now I don't even fucking call them because I'm like, this motherfucker crazy. So if they put it at 50,000, which is what they want, but they have in their head that, you know what, if anything, if I, in it, if I get over 42,000, I'll be happy. You see what I'm saying? So that's the thing with, if you set the price too high, you run the risk of not getting anybody to contact you. And, and for all y'all guys wondering when that happened, whenever y'all see these houses, with the prices, like if y'all was to buy a house and you go on there and you see the price slashed, that's, that's what happened. More than likely, that's what happened. They tried to upcharge the goddamn house for, because if it was for a good deal, it would have been gone, right? Unless the economy tanking it, right? Or something. But if it's for a good deal and you charging a fair price, you don't have to go back a month later and be like, all right, take 10000 off of it. See, what happened is that motherfucker ain't sell for that upcharge they tried to do, and now they ass back on the app trying to uh, cut 20000 off of it. No, motherfucker. Uh -huh. You thought you were going to be slick trying to charge that extra $20,000 so you can compromise, and then nobody ain't call your ass, and now you're trying to cut the price. You think you slick. So that's when y'all see people cut the price. Yeah, ain't nobody call your ass, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, now you want to cut the price. Uh-huh. 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 That's what happens. So doing the, that high price, it's got a good thing. It, 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 the, the pros of it is you can negotiate with somebody to a price that you want, but the, the, the cons is you might not get no calls. So that's another strategy, guys. Just have a number in your head set to where you would take. It's not what you want. You, 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 I might really want 100, but I can live with 60, okay? That's what I'm saying. Next, guys, do your research so that you can show the person what the product you're having goes for. So, well, like when I bought my G Wagon, that guy went right on some uh, car apps and showed me that, hey, this is below the market value. That's and, and that made me feel good because I, you let's let's just be real. None of, the worst feeling in the world is the feeling that you're getting beat. Nobody wants to get beat. You know, if I pay what it, if if I don't get a deal, that's fine. I don't want to get, you know, beat. Don't, I don't want to go home and feel like I got beat. All right. So by him going on there and showing me, Hey, look, this is what they selling for. Boom, boom, boom. And this, this is slightly below market value. And it, he went on all the little apps and things and showed me that. And that, that, that made me feel a little bit uh, better about it because I feel like, okay, well, even if I'm not getting a deal, like I feel like I should, at least I'm not getting beat. So do your research to show people, like recently I'm looking around here for a condo and one of the condos the lady showed me, she showed me the price of the condo that I was looking at and then she showed me what the other condos in the building sold for like the, within like the last year or so, right? Just so she can show you that, listen, you're not, you're not, you know, you're not losing here. This is, nobody's trying to beat you. You, you get a fair deal, okay? So if you're going to negotiate with somebody, make sure you have that research to show people that they're getting a deal, that you're, you're not beating them out their money. Another thing, guys, create urgency, all right? You know, act as though you have other people coming. When I got this apartment right here, I told the lady that I wanted to go look at 
some other apartments around here in Atlanta, right? And she was like, okay, she said, but this is the last apartment of this kind in this building. I don't know if the bitch was lying. She could have been lying, but I did like the apartment. I went to the elevator, got in my, went home, got, went downstairs, got in my car, called the lady back and said, you know what? I'll take it. I ain't even want to take that chance because I liked the apartment. The bitch could have been fucking lying, but her telling me that this was the last apartment of this model. I didn't even want to risk the, run the risk of going, looking at other ones. And then I called her back tomorrow, or three days later. And she said, yep, somebody already got it. She created urgency. And I knew it at the time, but I'm like, do I really want to call a bluff? Because I like the apartment. I was like, you know what? Let's just do it. She created urgency. All right, guys. Was it probably bullshit? Uh, it's probably a very good chance of bullshit. And the motherfucking apartment right next to it might look just like it. It might be empty too. I don't fucking know. But it was smart. And lastly, guys, in negotiations, dress nicely. Look like you are not desperate for okay. Y'all guys have no idea how much this matter. People are trying to, the optics matter. If you look like you hungry and starving, I'm going to try to take advantage of that. Okay. And so case in point, case in point, if you act desperate with a woman, she's going to try to take advantage of that. She's going to try to make, she's going to try to gain power in the relationship. You have to act like you are person and that's the same thing when you dress nice when you're trying to sell the optics the optics if you look if you look like you ain't hurting for no money then i have a tendency to take you more serious with your negotiation because you look like you good either way or not this is a, that's an underestimated point of this right here uh, dressing nice just looking like you you okay okay guys so that's all of that guys but so this is how to uh, negotiate also how to negotiate a great relationship. It's all the same, guys. It's all the fucking negotiations. All right, guys. I'll get back with you guys later.